Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Universal Studios Florida. We are back for another Halloween Horror Nights update video as well as a tips video. Um, this is going to be my underrated tips for Halloween Horror Nights. There's a lot of stuff you're going to be hearing in videos about RIP tours and express passes and things of that nature, uh, but there's a few other tips that you don't really see people talk about a whole lot um, when it comes to Halloween Horror Nights, and I wanted to talk about that in this video. And as you can see, uh, there are quite a few quite a few updates that have happened since we've been here last. Of course, the medallion, the signs are up. There's a lot more signage in the park as well. And it's a little bit of updates to the scare zones. So we're going to be talking about that stuff. But I really wanted this video to be more tips based, but it's going to be pretty chill. It's not going to be super formal. I'm just going to be sharing some of my personal tips that I want to share uh, when it comes to Halloween Hornets, stuff that I've experienced um, and things that I think are just generally good rules of thumb. But we got a lot to talk about, so I don't want to waste any more time. Let's just hop in the park and get things started. All right. And the updates begin immediately as we enter the park, as we see a brand new truss that's a appeared right here in the front with speakers and our beloved neon Halloween Horror Nights sign is back. This is kind of a staple and I'm excited to see it back in the scare zone in this giant truss uh, as you just enter the park and go into the Oddfellow scare zone. It's just like the medallion. It's great to see. It's kind of an indicator that we're getting really, really close. We're under a week until the event starts. So really, really excited to see this. Okay. And once again, moving from that section of the park. We're moving over here in front of the universe store back to that fellow's carriage because there are a lot more boxes around. So you have some surrounding the trees here, some over there and some in front of where um, there were triggers there. Um, so it's kind of covering it up, adding a little bit of theming. Um, and we also see some relics, some items back there and tarp on the table. So pretty sure that means there's gonna be some kind of body in there. There's gonna be something going on in here, some kind of little show. I, I really like how this carriage keeps growing and evolving and changing um, and keep getting cooler and cooler so i really can't wait to see this thing in action and uh like i said before if this is the only piece we really get in this scare zone I i'm not mad at that i think this is really really cool and a great sort of centerpiece for the park and as you're watching this you might be thinking who is dr oddfellow what does he have to do with this year's event and that leads me into my first sort of tip for halloween horror nights especially just any year but this year in particular because of the originals and the lore this is going to be a very lore heavy year and i think it's important for you to do your research when it comes to the original hhn lore obviously when it comes to ips do your research to things like watching chucky and stranger things and playing the last of us but especially when it comes to the originals like things surrounding dr oddfell because he's so important to not just this scare zone but all the other scare zones in the park you're going to want to do your research you're probably wondering how can i do that well for one i have a video out on the history and lore behind dr oddfell i'll put it right here in the cards if you want to go check it out but if you want something for the other houses other than just oddfellow i want to recommend the discover universal podcast they've been really doing a great job in presenting these very story driven interpretations of the backstories for these houses that's really well produced really well acted really well written and a lot of lore and uh, backstory is going into these podcasts and I feel like not enough people are checking them out so I want to go suggest check out the Discover Universal podcast and just do your research about the originals in general. The only main update we really have here in Dark Zodiac is uh, going to be these barrels here. Um, they're kind of lining the streets so we have some right here in front of Schwab's. There are some more down there and some on the opposite side. I think these are more just kind of like hiding room for the characters to kind of come around and pop out but um, pretty interesting. I kind of like the industrial vibe they're going with here, um, but nothing really super concrete telling us the direction they're really going to go with this zone. Okay, and then moving down, uh, I want to pop in the Five and Dime because there's been a lot of new Halloween Hornets merch since I've come last, and I wanted to do more of a deeper dive into the merch once you get to the tribute store, but there's already some stuff out now, so I do want to show it in the video. So let's hop in there.
okay that was just a little clip montage of some of the merch a lot of new chucky stuff um some of the new like tarot themed designs that i think are really cool and of course a lot of odd fellow stuff um including a uh, new originals house which i love that they're doing merch for the originals and for odd fellow um of course some of our ip stuff as well our never go alone merch um a lot of the general event merch that you're gonna see we don't have like scare zone stuff or anything quite yet but i wanted to talk about a little tip when it comes to the merch at halloween hornets and that is if you like it buy it if you can um because i've been burned so many times of like oh i'm gonna get it later or i'm gonna get it at a different store and they either won't have it or they won't have it in my size or what have you there's gonna be some complication when i could have just bought it get it if you see it um because who knows what's gonna happen there's a lot of popular properties here a lot of popular uh merch items this year like the odd fellow shirts have already been kind of selling out in and out and the event hasn't even really started yet um so definitely that stuff i know there's also a lot of a uh, little boost stuff we're gonna go check that out when we go to the all house e boutique and Alice adventure to check out some more merchandise but definitely like those things you're gonna want to prioritize buying if you do want to pick them up so just a word of the wise from me to you if you like it buy it all right, and coming out of Central Park, we're coming to like the sort of kid zone intersection. As you can see, there is a new directional sign over there just out of Jungle of Doom. Nothing really new in Jungle of Doom, so that's why I didn't really walk through it. Um, but over here, you can see the walls are down and Kid Zone Pizza is back open. So you're gonna be able to get your pizza fries next week when the event opens. Um, this was all walled off just last week and now it is not. Um, but there's another little update just as we pass this uh, going to my favorite attraction here, ET Adventure. All right, and coming around the corner here, as you pass these kid zone construction walls, we have our first house portal back here for ET. Um, so this is gonna be an entrance to one of the parade building houses, um, rumored to be the entrance for Universal Monsters Unmasked um, over here. And uh, there's only gonna be one back here just because of the whole, you know, this. Um, but yeah, here it is right here. We have no sign up. We don't know what it is gonna be just yet, but um, there is a screen up there. And uh, this is definitely our portal, so excited to get in line over here and uh, go experience a house back there. And why not a ride on ET Adventure as well? Just because we're here, we're in the neighborhood and this is my favorite right here, so let's hop in. Okay, just got done with ET Adventure and I wanted to pivot over here to the Coke's um, sort of store outside of Men in Black. It's really cool Halloween decorations. They have a big cat sort of design on the door and they have this very like atomic cabana bay almost style uh, Coke stuff with pumpkins and all that. Really, really love this. I love how they're decorating everything for Horror Nights. Not just like the houses and the scare zones, but like the other stuff and the more permanent things. So, really, really like this. And then from there, just past the Men in Black bathrooms, we have another house portal here. I think this room is to be the darkest deal back here. Um, there's normally an entrance to some sort of sprung tent back here. Um, so not surprised, but I know The Last of Us is going to be uh, back here somewhere because it's not over in Kid Zone. Um, so maybe it's over here. There are some trusses over there as well peeking behind the tree um, but there's gonna be a portal here for something uh, like I said just outside the men in black restrooms I also didn't notice this but the sort of uh, retro 50s Halloween display extends to this cold drink stand which is always here this is out right outside of men in black alien attack uh, but yeah over here we got that same 50s retro feature whatever kind of design with the cats and the pumpkins so absolutely love this I love the attention to detail here and just passing men in black we have another house portal right here um, by this entrance this is where bugs was last year so i'm not sure what this is going to be um will this be uh dr oddfellow uh, i believe that was what was rumored to be back here would be dr oddfellow's house um back in the sprung tent so who knows maybe it will be but uh nonetheless we have another house portal back here from the trust back here we're going to head to the fear factor form fear factor stage we have uh, our sign for nightmare fuel so it's up revenge dream i really like the new logo for this year i'm going to zoom in a little closer so you can see it a little better um no show times yet i think that's going to be over here they have this like sort of stanchion where they're going to be putting the show times but uh yeah nightmare fuel is coming back here and just directly behind nightmare fuel they have uh just a regular stand this is here every day but they have now themed it they have the never go alone sort of like the uh, logo design for this year plus the rune um, i think it's really smart to have like a halloween hornets themed booth back here i don't think they're going to be serving any like halloween hornets food it's probably just going to be freestyles and and beer and stuff but good to have this back here behind Nightmare fuel. Okay, so I think now is a good time to pull over for another tip. We've been talking about a lot of house portals and house entrances, so I wanted to give a little tip for nervousness um, because it's something that a lot of people go through um, when it's your first time at Halloween Hornets, or even if you haven't been in a while, or even if it's your first house of the year, um, just because it could be kind of nerve wracking going through these haunted houses. So I wanted to prescribe a triple threat uh, for combating nervousness 
for Halloween Horror Nights. So I'm gonna recommend you three things that you're gonna to wanna to bring to combat this. One is gonna be sunglasses, number two is gonna be headphones, and the third is going to be chewing gum. And if you put all three of these together, you're gonna to have a lot easier of a time navigating the haunted houses. Okay, so the first one, sunglasses. This is more just a general tip. It doesn't really matter if you're nervous or not, um, but it will help those who are nervous. I recommend the sunglasses because it is very, very bright here in Florida. The sun is everywhere, not right here, not right now, but it is definitely a thing here in Florida. So when you go in the haunted houses during the day, um, they're so dark that it's gonna be really hard for your eyes to adapt to it so if you're wearing sunglasses beforehand go in the house it's gonna be a little easier for your eyes to sort of adjust and the way that helps with sort of like nervousness is when you have time for your eyes to adapt um, it allows you to see everything more um, so it'll help you be able to see where the boo holes are where the actors might be coming from headphones are another kind of general thing it can be pretty loud at Halloween Horror Nights and the scare zones and, and at, the, at the show back here Nightmare Fuel um, as well as the haunted houses so I think bringing headphones will be good to sort of block out the noise and sort of muffle the noise even if there's nothing playing even if it's just sort of blocking it out but for me I like to play music going into the houses as well sort of raise my confidence boost my confidence up and it is so loud that you're gonna be able to hear what's going on so you're not really gonna miss anything and the third thing is chewing gum and I think for me this is a more of a personal one it allows your mind to kind of focus on something else as you're navigating the houses um, it's not all you're thinking about so I don't know it's just kind of a little thing I do it with other stuff too that I'm nervous about not just Halloween Horror Nights bring those three things when you come to Halloween Horror Nights uh, for the haunted houses or just in general if you're a bit nervous for this year's event okay and I kind of have another tip that's tacked on to the last one surrounding nervousness because I just kind of wanted to put these two together and that is when you do one house continue doing more afterwards the first one's always the hardest one to do um, because you don't know what to expect you don't know what you're really getting into so maybe start with something smaller start with something a little less scary and then continue like do some more houses um, kind of in succession not only will it help you with your wait times as you get in early get a couple houses done and you can knock them out before they get really really busy but also it just kind of helps with the nervousness because you're not as worried about taking a break and then getting back into it like it's your first house so I'm definitely gonna recommend that's something that I um, did doing a few houses in a row um, and of course like if you need to take breaks take breaks um, but if you want to see a few different houses um, I recommend kind of just doing them like that in order boom 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 knocking them out to kind of aid in that nervousness each one gets easier as you do it and I'm not only here to give a tip update but I'm also here to just give a general update about the event and if you can tell I'm here in the London section this is where I like to talk about the Death Eaters and uh, well the Death Eaters have been confirmed now officially coming to Halloween Hornets this year the Death Eaters are gonna be invading Diagon alley very exciting we're gonna see how the death eaters go see how that scare zone is i'm not sure if i'm gonna be visiting this one every night or maybe just the first night to see what it's all about we all kind of saw it coming but it's exciting to see it confirmed nonetheless so excited to see the death eaters finally confirmed for Diagon Alley at Halloween Horror Nights this year. And moving from London, we have this interesting little truss that is for the now confirmed to be in this location, Peacock Halloween Horror Bar. So we now know the Peacock Bar is gonna be here, is rumored to be here. And here we have a giant Peacock Halloween Horror photo op. So I thought this was gonna be a photo op and that is true. Um, we have this giant, of course, Halloween Horror photo op. Maybe there's gonna be some characters here. Maybe this is just a backdrop for pictures, but really, really nice to see that this is gonna be the Peacock Bar. Obviously more of the bar is gonna be over in this area, um, but this is what we have right here facing the water. Really, really nice. So this was just dropped today um, alongside the medallion and all the new stuff. So excited to see the Peacock Bar right here in San Francisco. And talking about the Peacock Bar, I wanted to get into my next tip, which also kind of has to do with the Halloween Hornets homework and doing your research before you come to the event. You actually get six months of Peacock with any Halloween Hornets ticket, whether that's a multi-night pass, whether that is a single night pass. It's something that a lot of people know because it's kind of hidden on the website and it's kind of hidden in your emails as well. So check your emails if you bought a Halloween Hornets ticket uh, because you do get six months of Peacock for free. Why that matters? Well, you can actually watch some of the Peacock horror programs. They have a sort of catered list um, they're going to be having, which may have some characters that are going to be featured here in this bar. Um, you can also watch Chucky on there, which is going to have the Haunted House this year. And of course, just watch some good horror movies to get you in the vibe. For Halloween Horror Nights, your access code comes as soon as you buy your ticket. So you don't really have to wait around for Halloween Horror Nights to start to get that six months going. So my big tip when it comes to this is definitely check your emails, look for that Peacock Halloween Horror Nights offer and get to watching some really, really cool horror movies before the event to get yourself ready for Halloween Horror Nights. Now moving from the Peacock Bar, uh, we have a couple updates for Shipyard 32. Most notably this truck right here that says Oddfellows trading imports. This is what I believe to be like the white HHN truck, right? It's just repainted red, has this Oddfellow logo on it. It looks really great with the Oddfellow symbol. And moving past this, we have a few more details um, with our beloved hashtag HHN Crane. Also some more props over here on the side, but uh, lots of additions to this section. So I really, really like this. It's really bright right now, so it's the middle of the day. Um, but lots more details here, there, and everywhere when it comes to the scare zone. And I think that's great. Um, I think it's absolutely fantastic. The scare zone has really come along to being something that I am uh, extremely excited for. 
And if you zoom in here, the wind's kind of blowing, but looks like there might be somebody in there. You can kind of see it a little bit. There you go. I think it's a better view of it. Looks like there's going to be a body in there. So I wonder if they're going to be sucked in and out. Maybe something like the Trooper Copper Scare from last year. Uh, maybe like coming before, uh, back and forth here. Very, very interesting. I think some of these boxes are new. I know this one is with these sort of uh, feathers. I don't know. It's like black and white feathers and fur. We have more sort of details here. We have my crate that I love so much. And just as we exit, we have a tarp here, which means there's probably going to be some kind of body in there. Maybe some body parts in a box. I don't know, but... We will see come opening night what's behind this tarp, but very exciting. All right, so over here at the Chucky booth, which has been upgraded with a little more aesthetic detail, we turn by Fast and Furious to see another house portal, which is supposedly for the Chucky house that is going to be coming to the event this year. I'm just really excited to see another portal here. You know, every location has their pros and cons, but this one actually had a really unique layout and it's something really interesting for Halloween Hornets in Orlando. So excited to see um, another house coming here. And if it's Chucky, I think that could be done really, really well. And the biggest real update to Vamp 69 comes over here in the corner back here behind Louis. We have three cars that I think are eventually going to be rolled out into the main scare zone. Um, but we have three different cars here. So I want to get a little closer, give you a little bit of a closer view of them. Right here we have this like Volkswagen bus, which I've always wanted there to be a Volkswagen bus. So excited to see it. And they have these like comics in the window, which is really cool. I don't think it's like tied it to anything relating to Ultra Violet comics, but looks great. These look like very timely comics for the 60s maybe this is the van where the main character kind of comes to the music festival in maybe if you haven't listened to the podcast go listen to the podcast and then this buggy has a very similar sort of paint job to the bus and we can see there is a tarped figure in there so probably a body in the car but uh little buggy here it looks really great very colorful and uh very excited for this but easily my favorite of the cars is this blood slayer one we have a lot of great detail in here looking like they're drinking blood and then we have some like cigarettes in here wrappers bottles just really feels like of the time and i feel like that's the thing with this scare zone that's going to stand out and with all the scare zones but with this one specifically is all the like period details can't wait to see how these are going to be incorporated into the scare zones and really excited for whatever the blood slayers have to do with vamp 69 and we have a little bit of an update to our fantastic bus outside of mummy uh this music fest or bus sign i love it it adds a little more to the bus and that's what i think is great about this zone is we have these really fine details um that are really adding to the atmosphere creating this atmosphere and uh, i i love it it's fantastic it's gonna make for great photo ops over here on our totally not woodstock music fest 69 stage we have some tarps all along here which makes me think we're going to have some bodies here um, and you can actually see a couple fingers sticking out there a couple fingers sticking out on the keyboard so um, i think we're going to have a very similar situation to what we had for vamp 85 we have a dead band on the stage. It kind of tracks with the podcast, so very, very cool to see that here. Okay, and as we're passing through Vamp 69, I wanted to include another tip, and this includes the scare zones. This is more for the scare zones than anything else, and that is go through the scare zones more than once, and I mean go through them during the daytime and the nighttime, because each scare zone, while they're, they're the same, they're the same props, they're the same characters for the most part, the vibe changes when you go in it in the day versus the nighttime. The music might feel a little more impactful. The lighting is definitely going to stand out a little more. The fog, it's definitely something to try if you have the time to go through each scare zone and experience them in different ways it might give you more appreciation for the scare zones and how they're put together um, how they can kind of change as the night does it's really really interesting and something i definitely recommend and from this stage we have the main reason i really wanted to come and shoot this video the tribute store facade is here it is our lovely mcpherson's comics and collectibles i'm gonna go up to the window show off a couple of the fun easter eggs that i really like um, we have this horror nights game with a couple of the icons, we have Usher, Director, Caretaker, Jack, Chance, Storyteller over there on the window. And down here, you can pause it and take a look. Uh, but this is like a layout of the park, which is really, really cool. We have some famous monsters of Filmland. We have Terrible Totems, which is a Boris Schuster novel. And over here is just Easter Egg City. Uh, lots of Boris Schuster Easter eggs down here to Case Files on Earth. Um, we have one, two bugs eaten alive right there, um, which I love. It's very much fitting with that theme of the house. Strange Tales, Asylum in Wonderland, those are both um, past houses, both Creatures and Asylum in Wonderland 3D, um, as well as the in-between. Both of those were 3D houses. I just made a video with Lost TV about uh, 3D houses, which is really cool. You know, Go check that out if you haven't already. Over here, we also have Rhyme of the Corn, which is another famous ultra-violent comic. So um, I'd love to see all these great comic Easter eggs in the window of 
McPherson's Comics and Collectibles, which is an Easter egg in itself. And then if you look a little closer at this poster, um, we have four little circles uh, looking like these are going to be sort of the four themes of our tribute store. So not sure what to pick out of these. I'm not sure if these are tied at all to the comics that you can buy for the tribute store. Might turn up in the different rooms of the tribute store. So you can pause that to get a better look at the photos. Then in this though window, we have a few more Easter eggs. It looks like this is gonna be like the main Tribute to Terror cover. And we have a, a fan t-shirt, which I would love if they made a shirt of that. Some references to the past Tribute Store facades here with a Black Cat one, and then a model of the curator, which would be great as a wax mold, I'm just saying, guys. We also get a little reference here on the wall to the Hollow Hill Cemetery, which was the cemetery from last year's Tribute Store. There you go, we're in focus. Um, and it might be where the curator's from. So maybe this was a character we saw in last year's Tribute Store, and now we're getting a full, better look. This is a vampire-free establishment. I guess this is the actual vampire mask. So very interesting considering this is the Vamp 69 Scare Zone. And another tip regarding the Tribute Store is visit the Tribute Store before the event. Now, you're going to want to see the Tribute Store. It's a thing that everybody loves. I love the Tribute Stores a lot. I made a whole video about them. But you're going to want to see this before the event starts because last year the Tribute Store was insanely packed with lines wrapped around the corner there. So you're definitely going to want to see this before the event. It's worth checking out for sure. It's always worth checking out. But definitely before the event, if you have a daytime pass, come here in the day. Or if you're doing stain screen, make sure to make a little bit of time for this before you get in line for those houses um, because it's definitely going to benefit you. And you're going to be able to see the tribute store in the best way you can with probably the least amount of people. It'll probably be always busy but it won't be as busy as it will be during the event itself. And moving right from the Tribute Store and Vamp 69, the main stage, we have two portals. Um, this is where Trooper Cobras and Demon's Pier were last year, and this is where it's now rumored to be uh, Dueling Dragons and Yeti Campground Kills. This is a pretty classic entrance back here, uh, so not surprised we're gonna use it over here by the New York Public Library. And right over here by Jimmy Fallon, we have our final portal in New York, now rumored to be Stranger Things. So there's another portal right here gonna be entering through the Jimmy Fallon queue and then going all the way back behind to Soundstage 23. And moving along to Music Plaza, we have one of our final house portals right here, rumored to be The Exorcist. Of course, they've always had one of these houses over here in Music Plaza, so I won't be surprised if soon we start to see the queue line uh, start to form here for Exorcist, which will probably be a pretty popular IP house. Okay, so talking about The Exorcist Believer gets me into another tip of mine when it comes to these houses. And this is a, a pretty important one. Don't judge a house or a zone based on its cover. Of course, we all love to make hype lists. We like to talk about what we're most excited for, but I just say there's a lot of work and talent and creative energy that goes into these houses, whether it's on the creative side, the performing side, or the logistics side. There's a lot that goes into these houses. So don't like have that approach that, oh, something's gonna be bad because someone online said it was gonna be bad. It could be really good and really, really surprising and be something that's for you. Some of the best houses come by surprise um, that kind of throw people off and go, oh man, I really wasn't expecting this one to be as amazing as it was. So go into Halloween. Go into Halloween Horror Nights with an open mind um, about the houses and the scare zones and just try to enjoy everything and take everything for what it is rather than for what people say it is. All right, and coming straight down from Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, we have our final house portal, rumored to be the location of now Blood Moon Dark Offerings. This was used last year. It's been used in the past, um, and this is going to take you back. This is where Hellblock Horror was last year. Um, so exciting to see a house portal right here in front of the park. It's gonna be interesting with no scare zone behind me um, in the new minion land, but a great sight to see nonetheless, like I've been saying with all the house portals in this video. All right, so we have now left the park. We're now in sort of the entrance plaza area, and I have another tip, and then we're gonna head over to Islands of Adventure. Uh, but my next tip is gonna be pick up your tickets as early as possible. So if you're coming on a trip and you have like a little bit of time before Halloween Hornets, go to the park and pick it up. If you're a pass holder, go pick it up as soon as possible. If you're someone with a day ticket, go pick it up before the hours of Horror Nights. Trust me, you're not gonna regret picking up your ticket early. You just go to Will Call and you know show them the QR code that you got in your email and you can pick up the ticket, um, but definitely wanna pick up those tickets early because what's gonna happen is people that aren't listening to this tip are gonna come and swarm the park and make that line for Will Call really, really long when it doesn't have to be. And you're gonna be wasting time waiting in line when you can have your ticket and be ready to go. So really, really important tip. Um, something you, I probably should have started the video off with. Go pick up those tickets early. You will not regret it. All right, we've made it to Islands of Adventure and we're gonna hop in the brand new Dr. Oddfellow overlay of the All Hallows Eve. Love how they have the Oddfellows Carnival ticket there. Let's head inside and see some of the new merch as well as some of the decor, because it's pretty cool if you're a fan of Oddfellow stuff. So let's waste no more time to get in there.
All right, so the All Hallows Eve store, a lot of the same merch they had in the main store, um, which was a little bit of a better lighting to kind of show off like the specifics of the merchandise. Uh, but they did have a lot of the new Little Boo stuff in there, which is really, really cool. Love this kind of new take on Little Boo. I know they really did him a lot last year, so it's exciting to see some different take on the character. Maybe this is the last year we're gonna see of Little Boo. I don't know how much they can really stretch this out into future years. Uh, but anyway, love the decor in there. Love all the odd fellow nods. Love the original posters um, that made its way to the original shirt. Really, really love that. And I think this is a great addition and if this is any indication of what the tribute store is going to be like i'm super super excited can't wait for that and i'm excited for a lot of this year's new merch really looks great okay so we're over here in front of a port of entry just about to leave the park and i wanted to give one more tip for halloween horror nights even though we're in islands of adventure it's a little weird but i wanted to say the most important tip of all enjoy the event the way you want to enjoy it i kind of mentioned it when we talked about the exorcist and like don't let other people's opinions define how you enjoy the event and that i think is very true if you want to do only a couple houses just do a couple houses. If you want to do a scare zone, just a scare zone. If you want to do a couple different things, do it the way you want to do it. If you want to do stay and scream and things like that, these are all just recommendations, but I really urge you to find the way you want to enjoy the event because a lot of people are coming to Halloween Horror Nights uh, from here, there, and everywhere, we're all looking for different things. Some people are looking for Stranger Things, some people are looking for Chucky, some people are looking for Oddfellow and things like that. Some people are just looking to have a good time regardless of what there is. So take time and figure out what you want to do for Halloween Hornets, how you want to approach it, and just enjoy the event your way. With that being said, I want to end off this little video here. Thank you all for watching this one. I know this was kind of all over the place, updates and tips. We're getting really close. It's crunch time. We're literally one week until the event starts. So if you like this video and like other Halloween Hornets related videos, um, like vlogs, I'm going to be here next Friday. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. I want to thank you all for watching this video once again, and uh, I'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.